But first, the first US presidential debate, it's come early, could signal the beginning of the end for Joe Biden after a woeful performance riddled with incoherent ramblings and bizarre facial expressions. It's left the Democrats with a huge dilemma. Do they stick with a president who has defeated Trump before but is clearly in cognitive decline? Or do they parachute in a new contender? And just who is that? Joining me now is former senior defence intelligence analyst, contributor for The Australian, Paul Monk. Paul, you will have watched it as I did. I mean, you just couldn't take your eyes away from what we saw at 11 o'clock on Friday. What did you make of Biden's performance? Well, I, I think my reaction would have been similar to that of most people, regardless of their politics, and, and that is that these were all the signs of a man who is um, mentally and physically frail. Um, and we should bear in mind that the previous day in his State of the Union address, he appeared anything but. He spoke clearly and vigorously. But the key thing is that people have to say, well, but when it comes to a major decision, another speech, a foreign engagement, which Biden will we see? And you shouldn't have to ask that question. Um, so that's what's landed on the American voting public since Friday. And uh, mm. it's clear that it's cost Biden a great deal in terms of credibility and mm. popularity as a candidate. The, the Labor MP, he's the doctor, Mike Freelander. This is Australian Labor MP. He has said he thinks Biden's got Parkinson's disease. Uh, clearly, we have talked about him having some sort of medical condition here for many months in Australia. I've said for about a year that I cannot imagine he will be there on the ballot in November. Uh, it's like they've just woken up to it in America, or at least they're publicly talking about it. I think it's been a conversation with Democrats but now you have the, the cheer squad left media. The New York Times, as an example, said it has got to go. I watched a lot of CNN over the weekend. Uh, they were damning uh, in terms of his performance. Uh, now that he has lost the mainstream media, do you think this is really the beginning of the end? Well, I think the dilemma for the Democratic Party uh, and the people who manage it, they're the ones we should be looking at closely, is they should have made this move a long time ago. And now we're getting closer and closer to the election. Uh, Trump is clearly leading. If the mm. election was to be held tomorrow, there seems no doubt he would win in a landslide. And uh, uh, so the Democrats have to decide if we change candidate, if we switch horses in midstream, is that going to help or harm our cause? Um, and all the signs are that his kitchen cabinet and the people around him and Obama and Clinton you know, Bill Clinton are all rallying around and say, oh, no, no, he's fine, he's fine. That's not a good look. You know, I think that the voting public would be far more impressed if people took a deep breath and said, we have to confront the truth and, uh, and persuaded mm. Biden that he needs to come clean with the voting public and urge them to vote for another candidate. But at the moment, that's not what's happening. So, so in mechanical terms, they can put up a new candidate. We all know it isn't easy. Normally, the, the vice president would be the front runner, but, but there's not a lot of support at all for Kamala Harris, lukewarm and best. I can absolutely understand why. Uh, this is the party of peak diversity, though. So how do they pass over a woman of colour? She's not black. She doesn't have Afro-American heritage. A lot of people get that wrong. But how do they pass over a woman of colour? And if it's not Harris, who is it? Well, I think that the... The key question here again is a matter of what I would call the moral courage of the leadership of the Democratic Party. They need to be willing to say Kamala Harris was chosen on the basis of identity politics and, uh, and we didn't expect that she'd become president and we need somebody now who will be presidential from the get-go. Um, and so we need an open convention and uh, this is a really rare thing. But if, if the top brass can step up to the plate and be honest with the American public, I think that alone would impress a lot of voters mm. um, because too many people, too many voters, I think are, are leaning towards Trump because they distrust the Democratic establishment. Um, and that establishment uh, is facing, uh, you know, a, uh, well, you could say a, a debacle of its own making. Um, they haven't shown enough mm. forward vision. They haven't brought forward the people who would constitute a really gripping or compelling leadership ticket. So at the moment, they're at a bit of a loss. There's and been look, some talk uh, for... Go on. 
No, 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 you please, please go on. Yeah. I was just going to say, there's been talk, for example, of, of wanting to get um, uh, Hillary Clinton to make a, another stand. Um, it would be interesting to see how that went. Um, or of uh, um, getting a, you know, not so much another rerun, but uh, getting, uh, um, you know, Madame Obama to step up. And she's indicated, as I understand it, she has no interest in running. Um, one wonders whether mm. if the Democratic leadership was to say, well, listen, for the sake of the party, we have to have somebody, and it really has to be a woman, and preferably a woman of colour, and you're the perfect candidate. Please, please, please. But again, that's not, it seems to me at the moment, what's happening. There's been talk of Gavin Newsom uh, stepping up, but he, he doesn't have much time, and he's a relatively colourless political figure. So um, they've got a real dilemma on their hands. Uh, absolutely, and and I and I look having worked in a political office uh, at the White House administration. We know that Biden's clearly not running the country, and that begs the question: uh, Who is running America? Because it is not the president, and that in itself is debasing democracy. Hey, I just want to get your thoughts on France. Um, Emmanuel Macron called that uh, snap election. It looks like it's uh, backfired. I mean, this is just the first round, but the far-right national rallies won 34% of the popular vote. This is a political earthquake, not just for the left in France, but I think broadly across Europe, isn't it? It is. Uh, and France, of course, um, ever since 1789, has been a country of revolution and political change. Um, quite turbulent and, and for a long time, right through the 19th century, rather unstable. But it is looked to as one of the, as you might put it, uh, founding members of the democratic West. Um, and what we're seeing at the moment is uh, the collapse, not so much of the left per se, but of, of Macron's attempt to hold things together with a centrist coalition. And so uh, Marine Le Pen is doing a, a brilliant job from a conservative point of view. She's reshaped uh, the Rassemblement National uh, from the days of her father, who was admittedly a fascist. Um, and she is responding, uh, as Donald Trump and other uh, leaders are, to clear public concerns about illegal immigration and indeed immigration and the scale of immigration per se, uh, and uh, concerns about uh, global trade. So it's not as if th this, um, what people like to call populism, is without foundation. What's mm. going to be interesting is if the results uh, for the National Assembly turn out as they appear likely to do, uh, either you will have the uh, the uh, National Rally governing in its own right, which uh, Marine Le Pen is, uh, is calling for, or you'll have uh, uh, somebody having to form a coalition um, to govern. But above all, it seems to me you'll have an enlivened politics between right and left rather than a complete collapse of the left per se. And uh, that's actually to the good because the issues that are on the table in the United States, in France and elsewhere are perfectly real issues. They're not an idle conjuration. And we should watch this space with great interest because in our own way, we have comparable issues here.